What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin, you're watching No Limits On channel from Russia with Love and today we're having a look at 7-inch monitor which is Andy Cine 4K C7. So let's take a look. But first, full disclosure, Andy Cine company did send me this monitor for free, but they don't pay me and I'll share my honest opinion about this monitor and they don't get to preview this video before it's posted. So guys, traditionally, first of all, let's talk about the kit. Besides the box, we do have two cables, which are mini HDMI to full HDMI and micro HDMI to full HDMI, and also the manual and the cleaning cloth, which is okay. Then we have the motor itself, no batteries included. It uses Sony NPF batteries, it has dual battery system, and it lasts about three and a half hours on one 970, the biggest NPF battery, which is okay at full brightness, of course, but uh, to compare, approximately seven hours we'll get from the same battery on the Atomos Shinobi monitor. So just to keep those numbers in mind. Also, it comes with this uh, mount, which is kind of L mount bracket, and it's pretty okay. You can rotate the monitor almost in every position. It has the cold shoe mount, but the this part, the locking mechanism itself is not as sturdy. And when you have two 97 is bigger Sony MPF batteries powering your monitor, it doesn't hold the horizon. So it simply turns, it has not enough friction. But all in all, it's okay. It's good that it comes with this L mount because for instance, the Shinobi or the Atomos Ninja 5, which I'm looking at right now, doesn't come with any mounting uh, accessories at all, except if you are not buying some bundles. On the body of the monitor itself, we have the power button. If you tap it once, it turns off the touch screen. Also here, we have three mounting points for your accessories, quarter inch threads, which is nice. We have some space for SDI, but it doesn't come with SDI. It's uh, a different monitor, more expensive one. If you need SDI, take a look at that model. Also here, we have two HDMI ports in and out, so you can loop the signal, which is also very nice. Here we have the headphone jack, the SD card, so you can download or upload your LUTs to the monitor, which is also pretty good. And here we have three customizable buttons and the wheel. And now let's talk about the build quality. It's made out of plastic and I can say that it feels pretty cheap, unfortunately, and you definitely should not drop this monitor, that's for sure. Uh, and also it gathers fingerprints like crazy and pretty glossy and glary. So it's not really um, bad outside because it's that bright, 2200 nits is more than enough to look at it, even with the reflections, but uh, it's aesthetically not that great that it gathers fingerprints a lot. All in all, I can say that it's okay, let me say 6 out of 10 build quality. So guys, now let's talk about the functions of this monitor. We have three physical buttons, one, two, and three. They're customizable, I'll show you two in a minute. We have a wheel, if we scroll it, the backlight will change. And if we push it down, we'll have a fast menu, which is also customizable. Let's press it back again. You see, we have a grid, we have a focus assist, we can turn it off, turn it on and tap on the screen to make it disappear. Or you can swipe from the bottom to call this menu. Also, if you swipe on the right side, you'll change the volume of your headphones and swipe from the left, the brightness. It's now very bright, so it's 2200 nits. So let's keep it at one. Then let's go to the menu, double tap, and here we have the landscape which has focus assist. If we turn it on, we have the functions, the focus level, also the color. Let's turn it off. Then the zebra mode, let's turn it on. At 94%, we do have some overexposure right here, but if we set it, for instance, to 95%, it disappears. So let's turn the zebra off. We have monochrome mode, it's gray or black and white, then red, then green and blue. Also pretty handy. Two modes of uh, false color. So we have here the numbers. We can understand which color is related to which exposure, which is great. You can see on my hands a little bit of yellow right here. And also let's go back, double tap. The second type is like so. And we also have the rating right here. Then let's get back and turn off the false color. Here we have the grid just the rule of thirds, turn it off, turn it on. 
the safety marker with different percentage so you can keep your image safe for broadcast for instance um, yeah we have a lot of options here a lot of options then center marker on off like so marker matte let's keep it like this so it will be uh, green out the parts that are out of the marker which is great if you want to customize your footage later on to make it kind of cinematic two three uh, two three five two one basically let's turn it off also here we have the marker color we can change it if it's on of course and the matte alpha value the next page is your waveforms. The best one is all waves. Here it is. We have the vector scope, we have the RGB parade, the audio meters, and the Luma waveform, and the picture. It's also pretty big. That's the handiest tool of this monitor, in my opinion. And it's a great thing to just pop it on, pop it off. Uh, I have it on number three, so I simply hit the button, the customizable button number three, and it brings all of the uh, waveforms and monitors that I need to judge the exposure, the white balance, and so on. Let's get back to the menu, go to the waveform, parade, we have it here. We have different types of parades, of course. We have the vectorscope on and off, we have this histogram on and off, we have, it was RGB histogram, we have the regular histogram, which is pretty small in my opinion. Also the audio meters, which are right here. And then double tap again, let's turn those off. Here we have our LUTs, switch it on or off. Also, we can import the LUT via the SD card. Uh, then the HDR mode, but it looks pretty weird to my eyes, so I'm not sure if it's properly set. It says ASLOG3, has gone 3 Cine, but it doesn't look right to my eye. Then we have the color temperature presets. You can make your image look cooler or warmer. 6500 is pretty accurate in my opinion. Then we have the black light mode. We have it on auto or manual, so it can be adjusted automatically and does pretty good job, but let's set it to manual because it will be overexposed on my top-down camera. And then we have the user tab we can dial in the red green and blue values so you can calibrate this monitor to your own taste and then we have of course the brightness contrast and saturation right here also you, we have a hue and the sharpness value which is also nice we can bring it down or bring it up and then the last page which is the backlight with the wheel we can change the backlight we can change the volume with it or zoom in or zoom out so let's keep it on backlight then customizable buttons, F1, F2, F3. The language, it supports a ton of languages basically, some Japanese or Chinese, French, Spanish, Italian, um, once again some Asian languages, I'm not sure which is which, Russian of course, which is great, and English. I'll set to English once again. We have OSD Alpha, on or off, low, medium or high, the OSD time, the volume and the mute button on or off for your headphones. So basically you can control it with the wheel like so, or you can control it with your gestures. Also pinch to zoom makes it like so, which is great. I really like this feature. For instance, uh, Shinobi and Atomos Ninja 5, they do lack this feature and it's not as convenient, at least to me, this is a great thing to have. So let's keep going. So now let's talk about the difference between the 5-inch monitor, which I'm using currently, the Ninja 5 versus 7-inch monitor. And I can say there is a big difference. So you have a lot more real estate, you see the picture much better, and it's a perfect size, in, at least in my case, to judge the exposure, to judge focus, to judge everything basically, especially during bright sunlight. So I vote for 7-inch. At least if you are not uh, really trying to be very discreet and uh, kind of hide somewhere because it's a big monitor and um, it's not as convenient to use in run and gun situations. For run and gun, I would still prefer the Ninja 5, for instance. But for studio workflow, it's a great choice because it's uh, very bright, very big. You can pop in like this, judge your exposure, judge your white balance and it's a 16 by 10 monitor so if you do like so 
you can see that we still have some additional place for uh, place or space for this information and the picture doesn't change its scale which is great uh, let me do like so so if you can try out the seven inch monitor for your shooting needs just go ahead and try it out you'll be very satisfied i guess and it's hard to go back to smaller monitors monitors monitor I have one more disadvantage, at least to myself, and it's the 4K 50, 60 or 100 frames per second is not working with this monitor. It simply goes black if you are sending the HDMI signal 4K more than 30 frames per second, which is a bummer to me and I have to manually set the HDMI out in my camera to be a full HD signal 1080p. But since this monitor is still 1080p or a little more than 1080p, uh, I'm okay with it. And it's a monitor, not a recorder, so probably it's okay. I just set it on camera and use it um, as always. And the picture quality stays exactly the same because it's still a full HD panel, not a 4K panel. Anyway, it says 4K right here, but it's not. So now let's talk about Atomos Shinobi, which is exactly the same monitor as my Atomos Ninja 5, but without the recorder functionality. It costs $300 and this monitor costs $269 on b and It's uh, totally worth this price and it's one of the best and cheapest monitors. We have also the Phil World monitor, which is exactly the same, but with a different brand name. Um, I didn't use Phil World, I guess it's the same, but uh, since Andy Cine did send me this monitor, I suggest buy an Andy Cine one if you have an option. So comparing 5-inch Shinobi with this 7-inch monitor, I would say that I do prefer the 5-inch monitor since it's more compact and also the picture quality itself, the sharpness, the contrast of it, the feeling about the picture is better with the Atomos. So if you have additional 30 bucks and some more for accessories as well for both of those monitors, I would pick the 5-inch monitor from Atomos. But if the budget is really tight and also you do need a bigger monitor, the 7-inch, this Andesini C7 is one of the best of the market for its price, the best bang for a buck, I guess. By the way, Andy Cine Company also does this thing, which is a smartphone holder, a big one. It's made out of aluminum, very light, very, very lightweight. And also it has the cold shoe mounts, the threads, the quarter inch, three eighths of an inch. And I'll be showing this unit later on in my videos when I have a review and comparison of four different small microphones, both for your cameras and your smartphones. So stay tuned for that video as well. And we'll unbox it and have a look at this device as well. I'll leave a link down below for this particular phone holder. So guys, to wrap things up, I did enjoy using this monitor and I do recommend it for purchase. If you did enjoy the content on my channel, please smash the like and subscribe buttons as I say in my videos and hit the notifications bell. My name is Ayak Nikitin from Russia with Love, no limits on channel, and I see you guys in the next video. Take care, bye.